Hey there folks, I hope you're all having a great day. Today, we're going to dive into a pretty neat topic. It's an RHCSA exam objective called Interrupt the Boot Process in Order to Gain Access to a System. And in this video, I'm going to showcase the type of method where you can pass the init equals bin bash boot parameter to the kernel to get early shell access and reset the root password. And this is actually what is taught in the Sander Van Voet cert guide book, if you've ever read it. But I had to tweak the steps a bit to make sure that it works a little more intuitively. And that's what I'll be showing you here in just a moment. Now, before we get started, I'd like to share something a little goofy. So, you see, the RHCSA v9 is aimed at the version release of RHEL 9.0 at this time, from my current understanding. And so, RHEL 9.0 has a poorly documented behavior where if you use the rd.breakboot parameter to interrupt the init ramfs and reset the root password, the system is actually going to prompt you to type in the root password in order to proceed. And this is bad because we're trying to reset the root password, so we probably don't know it, right? This is also a deviation from what the official documentation for RHEL 9 states, where it actually suggests to use the rd.break method, even though it doesn't work in the way you probably want it to on the earliest versions of RHEL 9. And yeah, I know there are some ways around this, like using the rescue kernel and stuff, but the point here is that this has confused a lot of people. Now, Red Hat had somewhat fixed this issue in successive minor releases of RHEL 9, and in those versions, the rd.break behavior is more akin to what we saw in RHEL 8, where it gives you a shell session in the init ramfs environment with no password required. And you would probably use chroot from there to pivot around and reset the root password like you normally would. Now, the RHEL 9 documentation, even to this day though, still doesn't properly acknowledge the existence of this inconsistent behavior, from what I've seen. But you can learn more about it in bug reports and stuff if you're really interested. And yeah. Now, RHEL 9.2 is out at this point in time, but for the purposes of this video, like I was getting at, we're going to stick with RHEL 9.0. I also just want to say that I actually made a video about this topic many months ago, but I decided to unlist it soon after uploading because a smart viewer informed me about the inconsistency that I just described to you all, and I didn't want to spread any kind of like suboptimal information, so yeah, I kind of just took it down. Okay? Cool. Let's get started here. All right. As you can see, I have a machine set up that I do not know the root password to. So I can just try to type something in, and I'm not going to get very far. So then, my next steps would be to send a restart signal to this machine, and mash the F8 key so I can make sure I get to the grub menu, like this. Then I'll press E to edit my first boot entry, and then arrow down to the Linux kernel line, and press Ctrl E to jump my cursor to the end of the line. And then here's the important part. I'm going to want to type in init equals slash bin slash bash to tell the system to use this program, bin bash, as my PID1, or my init. And yeah, that's pretty much going to be it, so I can press Ctrl X to boot with those options, and just wait a second for that. Okay, cool. So now, what's next? Well, we need to remount the root partition as read-write at this point. So I just want to show you real quick, if I do a grep for the root directory, which is just a forward slash, in slash proc mounts, which contains information about your mounts, we'll see here that my root file system is currently mounted as read-only. That's what the RO stands for. So now, to get this writable, we can do this. Mount dash O remount, comma, rw for read write, and then forward slash for the root directory. Press enter, and then I'll go back up to this grep command, and we can see here that my root file system is now mounted in read write mode. Cool. Now, before we change the password, let's check out some SE Linux stuff. So, first of all, is SE Linux even running right now? Well, the answer is no. So you can run get enforce, usually, to check on that, but you can see that's not working right now. And that's actually because the path variable, if I echo that, we can see here it doesn't include the sbin directory, or user sbin. So actually, if we want to use get enforce, we need to say slash sbin get enforce, 
and that should work out just fine. And you can see here that SE Linux is flat out disabled right now. And that means that if we modify any important files like slash etc shadow, they're going to lose their context label attributes. And that's what we need to be a little extra careful about. So what we'll do is run ls dash l capital Z on the slash etc shadow file. And this file is where, uh, of course, your password hashes are stored. This is what the password command actually modifies. And we'll see here that the context label is uh, system underscore u for user, object role, shadow type, and then level s0. So just keep that in mind. Uh, we'll just keep it on the screen for later. And now we'll use the password command to change the new root password. So I'll just type in something garbage. That's fine. And there we go. And now if I run that ls command again from before, uh, whoa, we can see here that the se Linux label became a big question mark now. And this is something that we need to address right away. Otherwise, this invalid information is going to prevent this file from being read when we log in with the system uh, fully booted up. And that's no good. So usually uh, in these types of situations, we could run something like RestoreCon, but that's not actually going to work right now because the SE Linux policy is not running or loaded yet. So yeah, uh, what we'll do instead is run chcon to manually correct the attributes, the context attributes. So up here, we can see that uh, we ran that command, that ls command, and it's telling us the correct security label for the etc shadow file. And all we have to do is just type that information into chcon. So uh, system underscore u colon object underscore r colon shadow underscore t colon s0, just like that. And then I need to point this to the slash etc shadow file, just like so. Press enter. And now if I run that ls command again, we can see that we are back in business. All right. So lastly, uh, what we can do is just run exec slash sbin slash init. And uh, let me actually show you what that is uh, before I run it. So if I ls dash l slash sbin init, I just want to show you, it's actually a sim link to systemd. And so then what does that exec part do? Well, that's going to make sure that we run systemd in place of the current bash process so that systemd is PID1, as it should be. Otherwise, it's not going to work correctly. So let me just show you that my bash process is currently PID1 right now. And yeah, cool. So we'll actually go and run this command, exec slash sbin slash init, and just wait a moment for the system to boot up. And there you have it. I can now log in with the new root password I set and everything is working well. Cool. Now let's just address some important things. So why didn't I choose to use the auto relabel feature in SE Linux, like it says in the Sondervan book book? Well, uh, if you choose to do that, then the first time you boot up with the exec init command that we just did, uh, you still won't be able to log in exactly. And that's because the auto relabel file is only correctly recognized in an ordinary boot up without the special parameters we added. So the file context on slash etc slash shadow will still be messed up for the moment. So anyways, uh, you would need to reboot the VM an additional time after that, and then wait some more time for the auto relabel to finish validating the entire file system. And that's really just only to fix one important file. So that's kind of why I tweak things around. Now, obviously I have nothing against what's in that book. I think it's a great resource, but I just wanted to put a different spin on this procedure to align with how I personally would handle the situation. Okay, so one final thing is that if you've seen the video I've put out a while ago about the systemd debug shell, then you would know that I also discuss a way to reset the root password using that feature instead. Now, I would still go with the method I showed you in this video if you really want to reset the root password, because the original exam objective says to interrupt the boot process to gain access to a system. So what they're really telling you right then and there is that they're expecting you to be able to intervene in the system starting up so that you actually understand the boot process. On the other hand, the debug shell method doesn't teach you as much. So yeah. Cool. 
Uh, and of course, I, I hope the way that I walked through the process actually clarified some things about how the system boots up. So I, I hope that was educational. And yeah, uh, cool. Thanks for watching and peace out.